January 16th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Genesis 29 and 30 from the Old Testament. So Jacob moved on and came to the land of the eastern people. He saw in the field a well with three flocks of sheep lying beside it, because the flocks were watered from that well. Now a large stone covered the mouth of the well. When all the flocks were gathered there, the shepherds would roll the stone off the mouth of the well and water the sheep. Then they would put the stone back in its place over the well's mouth. Jacob asked them, My brothers, where are you from? They replied, We're from Haran. So he said to them, Do you know Laban, the grandson of Nahar? We know him, they said. Is he well? Jacob asked. They replied, He is well. Now look, here comes his daughter Rachel with the sheep. Then Jacob said, since it is still the middle of the day, it is not time for the flocks to be gathered. You should water the sheep and then go and let them graze some more. We can't, they said, until all the flocks are gathered and the stone is rolled off the mouth of the well, then we water the sheep. While he was still speaking with them, Rachel arrived with her father's sheep, for she was tending them. When Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of his uncle Laban, and the sheep of his uncle Laban, he went over and rolled the stone off the mouth of the well and watered the sheep of his uncle Laban. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and began to weep loudly. When Jacob explained to Rachel that he was a relative of her father and the son of Rebekah, she ran and told her father. When Laban heard this news about Jacob, his sister's son, he rushed out to meet him. He embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. Jacob told Laban how he was related to him. Then Laban said to him, You are indeed my own flesh and blood. So Jacob stayed with him for a month. Then Laban said to Jacob, Should you work for me for nothing because you are my relative? Tell me what your wages should be. Now Laban had two daughters. The older one was named Leah and the younger one, Rachel. Leah's eyes were tender, but Rachel had a lovely figure and beautiful appearance. Since Jacob had fallen in love with Rachel, he said, I'll serve you seven years in exchange for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban replied, I'd rather give her to you than to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob worked for seven years to acquire Rachel, but they seemed like only a few days to him because his love for her was so great. Finally, Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife for my time of service is up. I want to have marital relations with her. So Laban invited all the people of that place and prepared a feast. In the evening, he brought his daughter Leah to Jacob and Jacob had marital relations with her. Laban gave his female servant, Zilpah, to his daughter Leah to be her servant. In the morning, Jacob discovered it was Leah. So Jacob said to Laban, What in the world have you done to me? Didn't I work for you in exchange for Rachel? Why have you tricked me? It is not our custom here, Laban replied to give the younger daughter in marriage before the firstborn. Complete my older daughter's bridal week. Then we will give you the younger one too in exchange for seven more years of work. Jacob did as Laban said. When Jacob completed Leah's bridal week, Laban gave him his daughter Rachel to be his wife. Laban gave his female servant, Bilhah, to his daughter, Rachel, to be her servant. Jacob had marital relations with Rachel as well. He loved Rachel more than Leah, so he worked for Laban for seven more years. When the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he enabled her to become pregnant while Rachel remained childless. So Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. 
She named him Reuben, for she said, The Lord has looked with pity on my oppressed condition. Surely my husband will love me now. She became pregnant again and had another son. She said, Because the Lord heard that I was unloved, he gave me this one too. So she named him Simeon. She became pregnant again and had another son. She said, Now this time my husband will show me affection, because I have given birth to three sons for him. That is why he was named Levi. She became pregnant again and had another son. She said, This time I will praise the Lord. That is why she named him Judah. Then she stopped having children. When Rachel saw that she could not give Jacob children, she became jealous of her sister. She said to Jacob, Give me children or I'll die. Jacob became furious with Rachel and exclaimed, Am I in the place of God who has kept you from having children? She replied, Here is my servant Bilhah. Have sexual relations with her so that she can bear children for me and I can have a family through her. So Rachel gave him her servant Bilhah as a wife, and Jacob had marital relations with her. Bilhah became pregnant and gave Jacob a son. Then Rachel said, God has vindicated me. He has responded to my prayer and given me a son. That is why she named him Dan. Bilhah, Rachel's servant, became pregnant again and gave Jacob another son. Then Rachel said, I have fought a desperate struggle with my sister, but I have won. So she named him Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had stopped having children, she gave her servant Zilpah to Jacob as a wife. Soon Leah's servant Zilpah gave Jacob a son. Leah said, How fortunate! So she named him Gad. Then Leah's servant Zilpah gave Jacob another son. Leah said, How happy I am, for women will call me happy. So she named him Asher. At the time of the wheat harvest, Reuben went out and found some mandrake plants in a field and brought them to his mother Leah. Rachel said to Leah, Give me some of your son's mandrakes. But Leah replied, Wasn't it enough that you've taken away my husband? Would you take away my son's mandrakes too? All right, Rachel said, he may sleep with you tonight in exchange for your son's mandrakes. When Jacob came in from the fields that evening, Leah went out to meet him and said, You must sleep with me because I have paid for your services with my son's mandrakes. So he had marital relations with her that night. God paid attention to Leah. She became pregnant and gave Jacob a son for the fifth time. Then Leah said, God has granted me a reward because I gave my servant to my husband as a wife. So she named him Issachar. Leah became pregnant again and gave Jacob a son for the sixth time. Then Leah said, God has given me a good gift. Now my husband will honor me because I have given him six sons. So she named him Zebulun. After that, she gave birth to a daughter and named her Dinah. Then God took note of Rachel. He paid attention to her and enabled her to become pregnant. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Then she said, God has taken away my shame. She named him Joseph, saying, May the Lord give me yet another son. After Rachel had given birth to Joseph, Jacob said to Laban, Send me on my way so that I can go home to my country. Let me take my wives and my children, whom I have acquired by working for you. Then I'll depart, because you know how hard I have worked for you. But Laban said to him, If I have found favor in your sight, please stay here, for I have learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me on account of you. He added, Just name your wages, I'll pay whatever you want. You know how I have worked for you, Jacob replied, and how well your livestock have fared under my care. 
Indeed, you have had little before I arrived, but now your possessions have increased many times over. The Lord has blessed you wherever I worked. But now how long must it be before I do something for my own family too? So Laban asked, What should I give you? You don't need to give me a thing, Jacob replied. But if you agree to this one condition, I will continue to care for your flocks and protect them. Let me walk among all your flocks today and remove from them every speckled or spotted sheep, every dark colored lamb, and the spotted or speckled goats. These animals will be my wages. My integrity will testify for me later on. When you come to verify that I've taken only the wages we agree on, if I have in my possession any goat that is not speckled or spotted, or any sheep that is not dark colored, it will be considered stolen. Agreed, said Laban. It will be as you say. So that day Laban removed the male goats that were streaked or spotted, all the female goats that were speckled or spotted, all that had any white on them, and all the dark colored lambs and put them in the care of his sons. Then he separated them from Jacob by a three day journey while Jacob was taking care of the rest of Laban's flocks. But Jacob took fresh cut branches from poplar, almond, and plane trees. He made white streaks by peeling them, making the white inner wood in the branches visible. Then he set up the peeled branches in all the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink. He set up the branches in front of the flocks when they were in heat and came to drink. When the sheep made it in front of the branches, they gave birth to young that were streaked or speckled or spotted. Jacob removed these lambs, but he made the rest of the flock face the streaked and completely dark colored animals in Laban's flock. So he made separate flocks for himself and did not mix them with Laban's flocks. When the stronger females were in heat, Jacob would set up the branches in the troughs in front of the flock, so they would mate near the branches. But if the animals were weaker, he did not set the branches there, so the weaker animals ended up belonging to Laban and the stronger animals to Jacob. In this way, Jacob became extremely prosperous. He owned large flocks, male and female servants, camels, and donkeys. God, I have read this story quite a few times about these sisters who are fighting over a man and uh, maybe it's because I'm a female and I understand those, those emotions, those jealousy emotions that happen in us human females. But this time as I read the story aloud, I, I heard something else in all of this, a different perspective that you allowed me to see. We were just in a situation where we saw Jacob deceiving his father and uh, basically deceiving his brother as well, Esau, and then leaving that household and, and he ends up in a household where he is the one being deceived now. And I, I was thinking how interesting that is that over and over and over again in my life, I will sin, you will thankfully reprimand me and send me back on a right track. And then I'll turn around and I will judge somebody who's doing the exact same thing I'm doing and react in a way that is not Christian-like. And I know, I know, God, that you and I have been working on this a lot and, and we'll continue to work on this a lot. But I see this in the story. It's kind of interesting because Jacob didn't do that to Laban which is amazing to me. He didn't fall back into his old habits of deception. We can actually see him moving forward in his relationship with you, God. He said, okay, I want your daughter. Okay, seven years, not a problem. I'm in love with her. You give me the wrong daughter? Oh my goodness. <laughs> sure, another seven years. And so he's worked for this guy for 14 years, um, seven at least, which were under deception for the other daughter that he doesn't even love. And now we see Laban after all of this being deceptive again, when Jacob wants to take the sheep and the goats with him. 
And we see Laban separating out the sheep and goats promised to Jacob and giving them to his sons instead of to Jacob. There's a lot that Jacob could have done legally at that time in this situation. And there's a lot of things that Jacob, the deceptive young man we saw in the previous chapters, could have done. But instead he does exactly what he is starting to reflect in his relationship with you, God. And he instead, out of faith, helps to turn, <laughs> with your help, God, I'm sure, helps to turn his animals into those striped and speckled and different color uh, sheeps and goats uh, and starts to separate them out, uh, the weaker ones from the stronger ones, as those different color animals start to show up. And he shows this faith to you instead of this anger and instead of this deception, he shows this faith to you by peeling these three different types of trees, by peeling the bark off of them and exposing what's underneath of them by putting them into the trough of water and allowing the animals to drink from it. Now, <laughs> I know there's a ton of arguments online about uh, and in the real world about the genetics and DNA and all that stuff about if the trees really did do anything. But to me, it doesn't even really matter because what we're looking at is we're looking at Jacob's reflection of his relationship with you. We're watching his faith completely in action. Um, and how he's responding to Laban and, and Laban's deceptions over and over and over again. So I don't think this story, even though, even though it's taught me a few lessons in life, God, I don't think the story is just about two sisters fighting over a guy. I truly think it's more about how we need to be reflections of our relationship with you. And, and looking at our life today, and what are we reflecting? Because that is our relationship with you, and that's where our relationship's at. And if we're reflecting deception and frustration and anger and jealousy and uh, hatred and misconception, jealousy. If we're reflecting those things, is, is that where our relationship with you is at? Well, it must be, because it's a pretty true reflection of where we're at. Or is our reflection loving and kind and patient? very patient in Jacob's case. Do we have this faith that we talk about all the time? Do we really have it? Can we really put it into action like Jacob did? 14 years <laughs> he put it into action. Pretty amazing. So God, today I just I just praise you for your consistency in, in, in our relationship. You have never left me. You have always been here for me. It is always me who pushes you away. It's always me who pretends like you're not there so I won't have to grow in our relationship. God, I just praise you for that. Praise you for valuing me enough to never leave. To never leave me as, as so many people in this life have. To show me that I'm a value because you've never left me. I ask that you show me those steps today that I need to see, however painful, but that I need to see them, to see the direction you need me to head, to heal whatever needs to be healed in my heart, to remove anything that is not pleasing to you, that is stopping or getting in the way of reflecting what I truly should to other people as a child of yours. Thank you, God. Thank you for your patience as I have been Leah, as I have been Rachel, as I have been Laban, and as I hopefully one day am Jacob, who is faithful to you and, and what you have promised him. I love you so much, God. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen.